I said salute to the untouchable True School Sports Empire. <laughs> That's right, over the untouchable. Not only the South Florida boxing scene, but the worldwide boxing scene. It's personal between me and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire probably presents something the boxing games are missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, this is my post-fight review and recap for Brandon Glenn versus David Light and Josh Kelly versus Troy Williamson. So we're going to give you guys the whole Friday wrap-up, and, and I'll give my guys my thoughts in one video. Also, guys, stay tuned. I'll, I'll, have, my, I'll have my Tyson Fury... Uh, Derek Chazor post fire video re review video out in a couple hours when the fight happens, and then we'll be live later on tonight for the real TBE Roma Gonzalez versus Guy Estrada. The, the trilogy will be live for that. So, uh, very, very eventful day here on True School Sports. But, uh, let's talk about it. We'll start with the the, the fights in the cruiserweight division yesterday because it was a fight that I believe was the more significant fight. Uh, so you have Brandon Glenn, Brandon Bulletproof Grant Glenn taking on New Zealand's very own the great white. David Light. You know, yes, sir. It was the number seven contender in the WBO versus the number six contender in the WBO. And it was a fight that I, I thought was going to be an even fight. And it was just that. Now, I'm not going to lie. As far as action and the way the fight played out, I thought the fight was very disappointing. You know, um, there was a lot of holding and hugging and clinching from, from both men. Uh, so, you know, it, it was very much fought in the trenches. I would have liked to see a bit uh, of work, more uh, work um, from in space at mid range and even a bit um, out, on the outside from both guys. But um, you know, Brandon Gland is a very physical guy. I mean, he comes from an American football background. He he's very good at pushing his opponents back. But David Light, I thought did a great job of <clears throat> not just holding his ground, but pushing Gland back and, and and landing some good shots of his own, uppercuts, right hands, left hooks. Things like that. Um, I wasn't scoring the fight, but I thought the fight was generally pretty close going into the last round, which is the 10th round. I, I thought that the fight could have been even going into the 10th round. And I was very impressed because Brandon Glant in that 10th round, uh, he showed a lot of desire. He showed a lot of will to win. And he really upped his level of intensity in the, in the, in the championship rounds. And he hit David Light with a bone-crushing left hook and wound up dropping him. And I ultimately thought that that was going to be the difference in the fight. Again, I wasn't scoring it, so I don't know if it was a robbery or not. But just going off of what I was watching, I thought that I was even or close to even. And I thought that knockdown would have given him the advantage uh, on the cards, particularly with him being the pro box fighter, right? Now, they announced the scores. Uh, one judge, I believe, had it, like a, uh, had it one point for light. The other judge had it like one point for Glenn. And then another judge had it like 97 to 92 or 97 to 93. Or some crazy score where it was really wide. And uh, David Light gets the decision. So with this win, David Light is now, I believe, in firm position to challenge Lawrence Acoli for the WWE Cruiserweight title. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. Based on what I've seen from both men in the past and based on what I've seen in this fight in particular... I don't think it would have matter who would win. I think Lawrence Acoli is beating both of them, just being honest. But um, good for David Light. You know, I think David Light is a good fighter. I think David Light showed that uh, he he could box, he could bang, and uh, he could survive when the going got tough. And, you know, he's definitely a legitimate contender in the cruiserweight division. Now, to me, the real story of the fight, even though he lost on paper and it was defeat, the real story of the fight was Glanton. Because Glenn talked a lot before the fight and then didn't get the decision. But he didn't like, Brandon Glenn didn't, you know, sit there and act like a, a spoiled brat like a lot of fighters tend to do these days. He pretty much gave David Light his just due. He was very respectful and pretty much took it on the chin like a man and, 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 and vowed to come back and, and be better. So for me personally, I, I actually wind up being more impressed with Brandon Glenn in defeat than I have any of his victories because... He has behaved like a fighter when things didn't go his way. And, I, and I, I think that's the mark of any great person in life, right? Not when things are going are going your way, but more so when things aren't going your way. How can you act when things um, aren't in your favor? And I thought he uh, exemplified the behavior of a champion. And if he continues to get better and work in the gym along with his great coach, Burt Wells, 
um, and continue to keep that great attitude. I, I do think he could be a, a, a potential cruiserweight champion. I mean, there were some moments in this fight where he did show some good boxing ability. He did, he was able to exploit that physicality advantage. Um, and again, I, I think he did more than enough to win, but you know, the, the, the judges didn't see it his way. And uh, he, he can live to fight another day and hold his head high that he gave his best efforts, you know. A great fight for Brendan Glenn. So, yeah, David Light looking forward to fighting um, Lawrence Coley next. Now, in the UK, we had Josh Kelly versus Troy Williamson. And this is a fight that I was very intrigued about because, truth be told, you know, Josh Kelly hasn't had a fight of this magnitude since he got knocked out by David Avenician. And... You know, Williamson was a guy that, uh, apart from his loss, his fight with Harry Scarf, which I thought he lost and got a good decision. Apart from that, you know, he's had the wins against Ted Cheesemans and Kieran Smith and these kind of guys and has become British champion in, 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 a, in a ranked, a highly ranked fighter in this weight class. I believe he's ranked in the top 10 in a couple of the organizations. So uh, it was it was a strong te test for Kelly because we know we know what the Trojan Williamson brings to the table. He's a guy that's not going to stop. He's a guy that's big, strong, durable, can punch. Uh, really, just knows how to bring the fight to his opponents. And it was going to be up to Kelly to impose his will and put his imprint on the fight. And that's exactly what we got from Pretty Boy Josh Kelly. You know, this is a guy in Josh Kelly in his last couple of fights that's been trying to box a more conventional style, but in this fight he went back to the old. Uh, Josh Kelly uh, boxing with his hands down, um, using his legs. And that's ultimately what I thought was the difference in the fight was his legs, his feet, his footwork. Uh, he didn't allow Troy Williamson to get set. He didn't allow Troy Williamson to um, to really set his feet and, and, and throw any kind of punches that would have inflicted any kind of damage on him. And really, Troy Williamson had a, had a hard time getting out of first gear. And, and, and Josh Kelly was slipping and sliding and, and just... Uh, landing a lot of clever shots and really just fought the fight that he needed to fight to uh, go ahead and get this victory. So now as it stands, you know, before this fight happened, you had Troy Williamson was ranked 6th in the WBO. He was ranked 8th in the IBF. He was not ranked in the WBA and he was not ranked in the WBC. So the way it's looking right now, I mean, if, if Josh Kelly beat the number 6 guy in Troy Williamson um, in the WBO and the number 8 guy in the IBF, that's got to give him some good ranking position now in the IBF and WBO. And, and that would now put him on the road to potentially getting a world title shot within a fight or two if he can keep winning. Now, the way it's going now, we got Charlo versus Tim Zhu at 54 coming up next month in January. If Charlo wins the fight, then I think that would probably benefit him because I think Charlo uh, will probably vacate those belts soon and look to move up. And then those belts fragment, there you have it. Josh Kelly can slot right in and go ahead and, um, you know, fight for a vacant world title. But if not, if that doesn't happen, and let's say Tim Zhu wins, then he's going to have to go fight Tim Zhu, which I think, you know, would be an interesting fight because, um, you know, Tim Zhu kind of has some similarities in his style to Troy Williamson, but obviously he's a, 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 a higher caliber fighter. So, um, I, listen, I think Josh Kelly... It's good, good, good for him, man, because this is a guy, you got to remember, a couple years ago, three, four years ago, this is a guy that had the world at his fingertips. He was probably the most hyped up fighter in British boxing, got knocked against Avenician. People threw him to the wayside, kind of forgot about him. Now, he's fought, not, now he had a fight on Channel 5 against Troy Williamson. And when the lights came on and, and it was a time to perform, he went out there and did a job and delivered. So a uh, great win for him. And now, just like that, he's back in the mix. So it shows you the resiliency he has to go on there and beat a guy like Troy Williamson the way he did. And now he's in the mix of 54 for a potential world title shot heading into, heading into 2023. And as for Troy Williamson, look, man, this was really, uh, I, I believe, a, a, a step up uh, because, you know, this is a guy that some people looked at as a favorite going into the fight. And not only did he lose... Um, he wasn't even in the fight. It wasn't a competitive fight. So is Troy Williamson a British level fighter? I'm not so sure. But now that he's lost and now that he's to get back in the mix, um, I want to see Troy Williamson fight Harry Scarf. I've been I've been I've been getting on Troy on social media a couple of times over the years. We've had some interactions on social media over the years. Cause I think Harry Scarf beat him and now Harry Scarf can't get fights in the um in the UK, but he's a good fighter and he 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 beat Troy Williamson in my humble opinion. And I think that would be a good rematch. And I think if, if Troy could win a fight like that, um, that would obviously show you where he's at. Um, but look, he can come again. I'm sure he'll get a shot at the, at the world level again. 
But right now, I'm questioning, you know, can Troy Williamson really make it to that world level? I'm not so sure. But he's a good fighter. He's a fringe world level contender. He can, he can punch. Hopefully, we see him again. But yeah, that's my recap for the fights from yesterday. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought about Brandon Glenn versus David Light. Give me your observations on that, as well as Troy Williamson versus Josh Kelly. And stay tuned for my Tyson Fury post fight review video, as well as the live fight reaction tonight at 8 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be live with Pops for the real TBE, Roma Gonzalez against Guy Estrada, the, the finale, the final chapter in one of the greatest trilogies in modern boxing history. So, uh, yeah, leave a comment down below. Make sure you guys take the time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniels. So until next time, take care, guys. True School Sports, he's the truth, one of the best YouTube, the best. Ooh, the, the number one. Number one. Brandon, you've been there, man, and you're building up a good following Thank with you. us. Thank you. And I'm proud to be a part of what you're doing, too. Mm -hmm. You are spectacular. and. Uh, Thank you, man. All the best to through school boxing and keep up the good work.